Virtual PC Simulator integrated with GNS. It's a match made in heaven. Let's begin. Our objectives in this micro nugget are really simple. We want to first take a look at the magic behind the scenes of how this virtual PC simulator does what it does. We'll then take a look at placing it inside of the GNS topology and verify that it's working correctly. So let's start off with the magic. That's a very fun piece. Let's imagine that we have a PC. Now this PC, not politically correct, but this personal computer, let's say we want to give the world instructions on how to communicate with it. And here's what we say. Dear, dear Mr. World, if you want to talk to this PC for inbound connections, the only way you can talk to me, the only place I'm listening, is on port 20,000. Just as an example, UDP port 20,000. So anything we want to send over to this PC, we send to the logical port of 20,000. The other thing we could do is say, hey, Mr. PC, how are you going to talk to the world? And we could say, well, Mr. PC, if you want to talk to the outside world, you just send it over to UDP 30,000. And this magic is really important to understand because here's how it's going to work. In GNS3, we can create a cloud. And this cloud in GNS3, guess what? It's going to be listening on 30,000. So anything that's sent by this device is logically received by the cloud. And if the cloud needs to send something to the PC, guess what? It's going to send it on 20,000, which would be received by this virtual PC. So that's the doors. You can call this the indoor and the outdoor. You can call it the ingress or the egress. You can put the input or the output. But that's the magic of how this virtual PC simulator does what it does. We run the virtual PC simulator. It's very, very tiny, takes very little memory. And not only can it do this magic for one PC, but you get nine. And the second PC is going to be listening on 20,001. And the next PC is 20,000 and two, all the way up through 2008 for a total of nine different PCs. And the first PC uses the output of 30,000, the second PC uses 30,001, the third uses 30,002, and so forth. So in GNS3, all we need to do is create this really cool kind of a cloud that's listening on the correct ports and sending on the right ports to communicate with any one of these virtual PCs. The first thing we got to do is download this file, and there's a link at the gns3.net site that we can download the file. Once it's downloaded, we'd expand it, and here's the file we want to run. It's vpcs.exe. There's also a default startup script that it runs. I've deleted that. So we launch it, and once it's running, here's the details for it. It says, okay, vpcs number one. Now there's nine different logical PCs that we could work with. To change back and forth between the PCs, we could simply type the number. That's PC3, that's PC6, and back to PC1. Very simple by pressing the number, pressing enter. And let's configure an IP address. We would say IP space and the IP address we want to give it. Then we're going to give it the default gateway it should use, 10.0.0.1. If that is your router in GNS3, you want to use as a default gateway. And then how many bits are in the mask? That's it. That's how we set up an IP address for virtual PC number one. Now, remember how I talked about the, the input doors and the output doors for this virtual PC? Check this out. With the show command, it's showing us that we have the local port of 20,000. In English, this says, okay, my logical address is 100051, but if you want to communicate with me, just send the traffic to UDP port 20,000 on this local machine, the same machine where I'm running VPCS, and that will be redirected to this virtual PC number one. If this virtual PC number one is sending traffic out, it's going to send it outbound to 30,000. So the match made in heaven is this. In GNS3, if we can tell the cloud that we want to send traffic to this device on that port, no problem. And we also tell GNS3 to listen on port 30,000 from anything coming out of this logical PC one. With VPCS running and an IP address configured on virtual PC number one, let's take a look at how to integrate this into GNS3. In GNS3, I have a project already underway. Here I have router one. It's got a 10.0.0.1 on its FA01 interface. And I want to put this virtual PC number one right here. One way of doing that, there's, only, there's more than one way, of course, but the, the simplest way of doing that is to bring over a cloud and that cloud is drawn as a cloud because it could represent a lot of different types of connections. I'm going to double click on this cloud, which brings me the details of it. And I'm going to go under NIO UDP, which is a fancy way of saying network input 
and output for UDP, and I'm going to say the local port that GNS3 slash Dynamips should be listening on is 30,000, because that's where PC1 is going to be sending to, and I'm going to say the remote port from GNS3 slash Dynamips perspective is 20,000. That means the listening port over on PC1 is 20,000, and from this perspective, if I send anything to that port, it'll end up at PC1. Those are the great defaults, by the way, that are inside of GNS3. I'm going to click on Add to bring up this new logical interface these ports i'm going to click on apply click ok and now i've got c1 cloud one configured i need to connect it so i'm going to bring up my connection tool i'm going to say i want to do a fast ethernet connection from this switch over to this cloud i'm going to pick that connection see a cloud could have multiple connections inside of it so i'm going to select this one that we just specified and we are now connected i mean honest to goodness how awesome is that now how do we test this well let's go back to our vpcs and from here, we can do a ping. So I'm sitting at PC1. I can do a ping of 10.0.0.1. That should be my default gateway. And that seems to be working. And all because I do have a default gateway, I should be able to ping all the way over to R2. So R2 over there has an IP address of 2300.2. We could verify that real quick. We'll make a road trip. Here's R2. And I'll say, Mr. R2, show me IP interface brief, please. There we go, 23002 on the other side of the network, and we should be able to ping that from this PC because we have a default gateway. And that seems to work. We could also trace it. So trace route and ping are the two major functions from these virtual PCs that we can leverage. Let's do a trace over to 23.0.0.2. And this says, okay, that didn't take long. The first hop was 10.0.0.1, which was our good for Mr. R1, and the next hop was 12.0.0.2, which was R2. And because our destination was directly connected to R2, that was our complete path through the network from our virtual PC right here all the way over to R2. In this micro nugget, we have identified the magic of how virtual PC simulator works, and that is through port redirection. We run the application, and each logical PC is sending and receiving on its respective ports. We integrate it into GNS by using a cloud and having that cloud listening and sending on the exact complement of those two ports. So the cloud can communicate with the VPC1 and the VPC1 can communicate with the cloud. We verified it worked by not only pinging our default gateway, but we also pinged the entire distance through the network and we did a trace route as well. If GNS3 and virtualization are in your future or if you have more interest in it, we'd love to have you come and join us in our GNS series at CBT Nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.